Okay, hey, this is Math 8, Unit 7, Lesson 4, Dividing Powers of 10. So we're exploring that today. So first of all, we have what is the value of the expression right here? So if we were to take this and break this apart, um, we would have a lot of twos up top. We'd have five twos, one, two, three, four, and five. We'd also have uh, four threes. So one, oops, sorry, one, two, three, four. And we'd have Oh, two more threes, one and two. Got it, so that's a long thing there. Here we have a two. We also have four more twos, one, two, three, four. And then six threes, one, two, three, oops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so just knowing we know about fractions, we notice that this is one, 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 one. Like they're all pretty much canceling each other out. So the whole thing equals one. Kind of crazy, isn't it now? So when you think about this here, this is two to the fifth power. Here we'd add that up, same basis. Four plus two is six times three to the sixth power. Here I have a one, one plus four is five, so two to the fifth power, and still three to the sixth. So I have the same thing on the top and bottom for both of these, which means the actual value of this expression is still gonna be one. And that would be the value of that expression. We can show it long ways like so, we can combine things and show that this becomes two to the fifth, and two to the fifth here, and then three to the sixth, and three to the sixth there. You end up with one no matter what you do. Okay, so the first one I actually today is to divide powers of 10. It says to complete the power, uh, complete the table to explore the patterns in the exponents when dividing powers of 10, you use the expanded column to show why the given expression is equal to the single power of 10, and we can skip a single box. So far we've been skipping this one. I'm gonna probably guess we're gonna do that again. Let's take a look. So here we have 10 to the fourth, which is here, one, two, three, four, divided by 10 squared, okay? And then rewrite this then as saying, well, let's cluster those together, and we'll write them like so, and then keep what's left on its own out there. So that all becomes one, and we can see that there, and what you're left with is just the two tens, which is 10 squared. No problem. All right, so let's see if we can work this one backwards here. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, so we have 10 to the fifth power, and we're dividing that by 10 squared. The rule seems to be so far, we take the top one and we divide it and we subtract. Five minus two becomes three. So you're gonna put 10 to the third left over. And that's what we see there is three of them right there. Let's do this one here. We're gonna put six tens on top. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're gonna divide that by three of them. One, two, and three. So I'm left then, that all becomes a little cluster of one, right? 10, 10, 10, over 10 times 10 times 10, times, I'm left with still a 10, and a 10, and a 10. So that all becomes one times 10 times 10 times 10. So I'm left with 10 to the one, two, three, third power. Now you can see why we don't expand these for too long. It just takes a lot of work when all we're really doing is doing six minus three, and getting there. So in this one, I definitely don't want to write all that out. What I end up doing is I do 43 minus 17 for the exponent part. And when I solve that there, I end up with 26. So I have 10 to the 26 power. So based upon that pattern there, our rule is gonna be that when I divide the exponents with the same base, I have 10 to the n minus m becomes my new rule there. That becomes the way to find those equivalent expressions. It's predicted by 2050, there will be 10 to the 10th power people on earth and 10 to the 12th power number trees. How many trees for persons? So we're gonna do trees over people. So the tree is 10 to the 12th and the people are 10 to the 10th. So how many trees will there be per people? We do 12 minus 10, so 10 to the 12 minus 10 power is 10 to the second. And again, when it's the base 10, that tells you how many zeros to put after the one. So we're gonna put two zeros after the one. So there'll be 100 trees for every single person at that time on earth. Okay, so there you go. Let's take a look at the next part here. It says, are you ready for more? And this is a great little problem here that brings up some interesting ideas. So you have 10 to the fourth. So this is like one, two, three, four divided by 10 to the six. One, two, three, four, uh-oh, and then what? We have five and six. So 
if I was to like rewrite that again, I have this becomes one, right? Times one over 10 times one over 10. So as a single power, that goes away and I have this one over 10 happening two times or one over 10 squared. Interesting, isn't it? So I, have, I can actually have a, a um, exponent down in the denominator. But let's think about our rule here. What we're saying is I have 10 to the fourth minus 10, or sorry, divided by 10 to the sixth. We know we're gonna subtract those exponents as the rule. So that becomes 10 to the four minus six, which equals 10 to the minus two power. Just interesting to take a note that when we follow the rule, we end up with a negative exponent. And if we're not worried about a rule, but just working it out with expanded form, we find that it looks something like that. So it's something to kind of keep in the back of your head as we kind of move forward and we might see something like this in an upcoming lesson. Okay, so so far I looked at powers of 10 with exponents greater than zero. What would happen to our patterns if we included zero as a possible exponent? And we've talked a little bit about this already, but here we go some more. Write 10 to the 12th times 10 to the zero with the power of 10 with a single exponent using the appropriate exponent rule. Explain and show. All right, because of the same base, I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna multiply. I'm gonna, sorry, yeah, I'm gonna add those together. So 10 to the 12th plus the zero, because it's this exponent plus that exponent. So 12 plus zero is 12. So I didn't get anywhere, did I? So what happens here is that 10 to the 12th times 10 to the zero still leaves you with 10 to the 12th. So what number could I multiply by 10 to the 12th to still get 10 to the 12th? That'd be one. And because it's one, it's gonna tell us something here. How about over here? I have 10 to the eighth, following the same rule, 10 to the eighth, and again, we're subtracting, minus zero is gonna equal 10 to the eighth. So what number can I divide by 10 to the eighth to still get 10 to the eighth? That's gonna be one. If we want the exponent rule, uh, we've to, we found a work even when the exponent is zero, then what does the value of 10 to the zero have to be? It has to be one in order for this to actually work out for us. Noah says, if I try to write 10 to the zero expanded, it should have zero factors that are 10, so it must be equal to zero. Do you agree or discuss that? Um, well, have a discussion. I'll let you talk about that with your neighbor and see what you think about that one. Okay, activity number four here, making millions. It says, write as many expressions as you can now the same value is 10 to the sixth power. Now 10 to the sixth power means I put a one down and then I put six zeros. So that's a million, which is why it's called making millions. I could call that a million. I could write this as 10 to the fourth times 10 squared. Why? Because I add those up. I could do 10 to the eighth divided by 10 to the second. Why? Because I subtract those, I end up with 10 to the six. I could do something like 10 to the third, and I could square that because I multiply that together to still end up with 10 to the sixth power. So there's lots of things you can come up with, that's up to you. So in summary today, when we divide powers of 10, the exponent in the denominator is subtracted from the exponent in the numerator. And that was our big thing here. So nine and three becomes nine minus three to get me to the six right there. So it gives us a new exponent rule of 10 to the m n divided by 10 over 10 to the m equals 10 to the n minus m. The other thing we have to keep in mind is that it only makes sense when n and m are positive exponents and n is greater than m. But we can extend the new rule um, so far. This is the key thing. So far, it only works that way. It'll work different ways later, but so far, that's what we know. But we do have this new rule that anything to the zero power is gonna be equal to one. All right, so pause there, start working on your homework, and then press play in a moment to see how you did. All right, homework today. Let's evaluate this here. 10 to the zero power, anything to the zero power is one. Here I have 10 to the three minus three, which tends to be zero, and the zero power is one. Here, a little more complicated, but not really. 10 squared is 100, plus 10 to the first power is 10, and 10 to the zero power is one. So 100 plus 10 plus one is 111. So don't get too tricked up there, okay? Number two, let's rewrite this expression as a single power of 10. 
So on top, I have 3 plus 4 is 7. So I have 10 to the 7th over 10 to the 5th. Now I can do 7 minus 5, and that becomes 10 to the 2nd. Here, we have 10 to the 4th. That stays the same. Times 12 minus 7 is 10 to the 5th. We can add those up, and that becomes 10 to the 9th. Here, let's do this part first. We have 10 to the fifth divided by 10 to the third. That becomes 10, five minus three is two squared. And that's all to the fourth power. We're gonna multiply those together. So that becomes 10 to the eighth power. Up here, let's take care of the top part. Four plus five is nine, plus six is 15. So 10 to the 15th power. And down here, I have 10 to the three times seven, or three plus seven is 10, so 10 to the 10th power. We're going to subtract this. 15 minus 10 is 5, so we have a 10 to the 5th power right there. And over here, um, we can go ahead and multiply it out first if we'd like to. 5 times 2 is 10, so this is 10 to the 10th power. And 2 times 3 is 6, so 10 to the 6th power. 10 minus 6 is 4. So we'd say 10 to the 4th power right there. Number 3. The sun is roughly 10 squared times as wide as the earth. The star KW Sagittari is roughly 10 to the fifth times as wide as the Earth. How many times wide as the, as wide as the Sun is KW? Explain how you know. Well, we're in comparison of the KW to the Sun. So 10 to the fifth divided by 10 squared. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So 10 to the third power. If I want to write that as a number, it's 1 with how many zeros? 1, 2, 3. This is about 1,000 times wider. Number four, bananas cost $1.50 a pound for our bananas. Guavas cost $3 a pound for our guavas, and they spend $12 on fruit. Let B be pounds of bananas, G for guavas. Write an equation, the two variables, no problem. So $1.50 for bananas plus $3 for guavas, and I have a total of $12 is what I'm gonna use. That becomes my equation. Now, I want to rearrange this so that B, first of all, is the independent variable. So if B is independent, that means it's not, nothing's going to change it, right? It stays what it is. That makes G the dependent. So we're going to make G our dependent here. And over here, G is the independent. So we're going to make B our, in, our, our dependent here. So let's move this around and make this G on one side. So to do that, I have a 12. I know that stays over there, no problem. I'm going to subtract this to put it over there. So I'm going to do minus 1.50b. And I'm going to divide everything by 3. If I divide everything by 3, 3.0, this becomes 12 by 3 divided by 3 is 4. And then 1.5 divided by 3 is about a half. Right? I can reduce down to a half, b. So I could rewrite this like that if I chose to. If you left it like this, it's not wrong. That's fine, but you could uh, simplify it a little bit more. We'll do the same thing with the B for the bananas, right? I'm gonna have the 12 still, and now I'm gonna subtract the 3.00 guava and divide everything by the 1.5 that were with the banana, 1.50. So 12 divided by 1.50 is actually about eight. So bananas equals eight minus, and then three divided by 1.5 is two and a G. So my two simple equations are gonna be something along these lines there. Those will work out. But if you have the larger equation, that is just fine. One more for today's lesson. All right, it says Lynn mom, Lynn's mom bikes at a constant speed of, got a lot of sunshine coming in here, sorry. At 12 miles per hour, Lynn does one third of that speed, of that rate, it's her rate, one third of that. So 12 miles per hour, I look at my thing here and I know I have one hour there. And as I go up, I don't have 12. Counting by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, I can't get to 12. 12 is up here somewhere, right? So I don't know where that's at. I can mark it and graph it, but I'm not accurate. So because it's a nice number, 12 is for one hour, that would mean that in half of that, that's gonna be six miles in half of an hour, right? So here's half of an hour. And let's just go up and plot that at six. We'll put that point there for Lynn's mom. So I can at least make a graph with the six there. And sure enough, it gets me close to where my dot was, where I kind of estimated up there. So there's a graph for Lynn's mom. Now, for Lynn, Lynn is one third of that speed. So what's happening is the mom's going 12 miles per hour, but Lynn is doing one third of that. 
So we're going to multiply by a third to find out what her rate. Well, her rate is going to be not 12 miles per hour, but actually 4 miles per hour. Because 1 third of 12 is about 4. So at the 1 hour mark, I'm going to come up here and put a point there at 4 miles. Because she's going 4 miles per 1 hour. I'm going to mark this here and there. And away we go. All right. So this is Lynn and this is Mom. We plotted it and we're good to go. That's what I have there. My answer key, my book, by the way, does show a little different answer. It shows that Lynn is walking um, at three miles per hour. That would be one fourth the speed. So I'm gonna keep mine there at four miles per hour, but that's just what I'm thinking. Some days I'm thinking wrong and that's okay. Have a great one, we'll see you next time.